H.S.M. Coxeter of the University of Toronto is a geometer. To Professor Coxeter, reflections are of particular interest because of their implications for geometry and algebra. A single plane mirror creates a world of bilateral symmetry. Every point off the mirror is reflected into an image on the opposite side. And each point on the mirror is its own reflection. Every point has an image and a point of its image. Any object placed before a mirror, together with its image, forms a figure having bilateral symmetry, with the mirror its plane of symmetry. A reflection reverses sense. A left hand becomes a right. Being a transformation of period two, the reflection generates a group of order two. This is the complete symmetry group of any plane figure having only one axis of symmetry. For such a figure has only two symmetry operations, the identity and the reflection. The group that is generated by reflection in a single plane mirror is called the first dihedral group because a single mirror can be regarded as two mirrors set at a dihedral angle of pi. Two mirrors set at a dihedral angle of pi over two exhibit the second dihedral group, which is of order four. The four operations in this group are the identity, the two reflections in the basic mirrors, and the half turn about the line of intersection of the two mirrors. The half turn is the product of the two reflections and yields the image that agrees in sense with the original. This half turn generates a cyclic subgroup of the second dihedral group. The second dihedral group is the complete symmetry group of a plane figure with exactly two axes of bilateral symmetry. Two mirrors with a dihedral angle of pi over three generate the third dihedral group. This group is of order six and is the complete symmetry group of any plane figure with exactly three axes of symmetry. The two images with the same sense as the original can be obtained from the original by rotations through two pi over three and four pi over three. The rotation through two pi over three generates a subgroup of order three. With the two mirrors set at pi over four, the number of images is eight. The reflections now represent the fourth dihedral group, which is of order eight. The rotational subgroup is of order four and can be observed from the images that agree in sense with the original object. In general, when the dihedral angle is pi over n, the group generated is the nth dihedral group, which has order 2n. The rotations in this group form a cyclic subgroup of order n, generated by a rotation through 2 pi over n. The limiting situation, when n tends to infinity, is the infinite dihedral group generated by reflections in two mirrors set at a zero angle, that is, two parallel mirrors. The infinite dihedral group is the complete symmetry group of the zigzag pattern. In this limiting case, the rotations become translations, which are represented by alternate images of the original figure. Sir David Brewster held that a two-mirror kaleidoscope is formed only if the dihedral angle is pi over n, where n is an integer, rather than two pi over n, as stated by his predecessor, Athanasius Kircher. 
The mirror, set at an angle of 2 pi over 5, permit a test of Kircher's assertion. This arrangement appears to generate a dihedral group. However, a closer look shows the inconsistency in orientation occurring with an odd number of images. This settles the disagreement in favor of Brewster. If it is not required that the mirrors form a true kaleidoscope, the dihedral angle can be set arbitrarily. The product of two reflections, one in each mirror, is a rotation through twice the dihedral angle. Therefore, any rotation can be obtained as a product of reflections in two intersecting mirrors. Since translations can also be represented as a product of reflections, then it is possible to generate any isometry as a product of reflections. Any sense-preserving or direct isometry is the product of an even number of reflections. Any sense-reversing or opposite isometry is the product of an odd number of reflections. If these principles of reflecting in a pair of intersecting mirrors are employed, it is possible to construct any kind of regular polygon. It is also a simple matter to stellate some of these regular polygons, obtaining figures like the octogram, and the decagram. If three mirrors are set perpendicular to one plane, with the dihedral angles all equal to pi over 3, a true kaleidoscope is formed by each pair of mirrors. This three-mirror kaleidoscope produces symmetric patterns that cover the entire plane. One such pattern is a tessellation a subdivision of the plane into polygons, such as equilateral triangles. This tessellation is said to be regular because the polygons are regular and congruent. Another is a rhombic tessellation that is semi-regular. Some vertices are surrounded by six rhombi, others by three. The hexagonal tessellation is regular. Subdividing the basic equilateral triangle creates various patterns related to the regular tessellations. of mirrors is changed so that they are placed on an isosceles right triangle, each pair of mirrors still forms a true kaleidoscope. Placing the mirrors in this way yields a semi-regular tessellation of isosceles right triangles, as well as regular tessellations of squares. There are actually three distinct tessellations of squares with this arrangement of mirrors. These tessellations may serve as a basis for the creation of any number of patterns covering the entire plane. 
different patterns are achieved simply by varying the design within the fundamental triangle. Mathematician's concern with reflections does not end with the two-dimensional world of the dihedral kaleidoscope. With trihedral kaleidoscopes, he studies reflections in three-dimensional space. He has also created reflections in higher spaces of four, five, or more dimensions. Although it is impossible actually to visualize reflections in higher spaces, the mathematical abstraction does exist and has geometric significance and important applications to algebra. <laughs> 